in the same blooming place since 1952. All right, 24, uh, 25, 26. Oh, my gosh, I can't do my math. 26 minutes before 8 o'clock. I'm trying to do bad backwards math. Uh, Judson Sapp is in the studio. We've had Judson in the studio before. He is here today again to uh, uh, introduce himself to you, to allow you to have a chance to get to know him and his positions because he wants to be your congressman. Um, he is running for the the Congress. Uh, Four to three. What is it? Florida 3. So that's Florida from 3. District Mar- 3. Marion County, about Ocala North. If you're geographically, you can figure that out where you live. You can always go to judsonsap.com and plug your address in. It's uh, the only county in the district that's split between two representatives. Uh, it says here you're a writer. You're that's correct. A member of the Screen Actors Guild. That is correct. Did we and talk about that last time? Uh, I think we briefly did. And yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's funny because I, I obviously. F- f- a- Friends of your opponent like to try to call you out on anything, and I, I always like to remind them, Ronald Reagan was too, and he was a pretty good Republican, so there's no fears there. If there's, if there's anything that an actor brings with them to politics, it's the uh, ability to speak eloquently, and, and I think that's important. Uh, of course, we as, as the public have to listen to what you're saying with those words, um, but the, and you do. I mean, I've, I've heard you before. Well, and, and you know, the other thing it does... With when you work in that industry as a conservative, you have to work with oh my people gosh, yeah, who do not agree with you. What's and, going on with Jimmy Kimmel, by the way? I don't, I used to like him, now I'm starting to, yeah, it's uh, it, I mean, they're, they're, they're just issues go-to. with him in my world of business uh, and railroad construction. We just don't talk politics, we get work done and make That's money. That's it, there you go. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Uh, all right, so let's talk about you. Um, you. You sent us a, a list of some of the things you wanted to talk about. Um, taxes was the first thing on the list. Um, I know you want to talk about infrastructure, but let's talk about taxes first. Sure. Um, what, what kind of ideas do you want to bring to the table regarding taxes? Well, tax cuts need to be permanent. That's something that was the failure of the last tax bill is, is when they expire, it, it, you, you just wait out the clock. It's like insurgents in, an, in a war that go, oh, you're leaving? All right, we'll wait you out. Uh, and they just... They have to be permanent. We need more. I, I heard President Trump talking about taxes 2.0. Uh, we need to get on board with that and happen. Uh, when you have fair taxes for everybody, it gives an investment that everybody wants to invest back in the country. Mm-hmm. I think that's something people don't understand. They go, well, it's 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 not, f- you know, if you're on one side of it, you're going, well, it's, it's not fair because they make more money. If you make more money, you go, you go it's not fair because I'm paying more taxes. Well, if we get rid of that, we start to heal as a country and go, okay, we're all invested equally in this country and it, and it moves us forward. And I think that's the argument that, that people uh, who are pro-tax cuts need to start making is, this is about being in the in the country together and equally investing in the country and, and its long-term success. Yeah. Do, do you feel like taxing corporations is uh, a fair idea? I think that um, you have to have – it has to be – there should never be a decision of do I want to be a private or a corporation because of the tax break. It should be equal so that you, you're you making the best business decision, not the best tax decision. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, uh, you, you have to have some tax revenue uh, coming in, and it's not fair uh, – it, it, corporations want to be treated like individuals, then you have to be taxed like individuals. I want to keep it as low as possible. It has to be a competitive rate uh, so that you can uh, compete with other countries. I think that's something that people don't for- often forget when mm-hmm. they're talking about taxing corporations. They go, well, corporations can afford it. Well, maybe they do generate a lot of money, but they also pay a lot of payroll. They do a lot for the communities, right, right, and right. Uh, you don't want to put them out of business. It just has to be fair, and that's. Uh, I mean, I, I would if I could get it down to zero. I would. That's. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Can you? I don't know. That's. Uh, I, I think. I think most people are like when you when you ask somebody. For, for example, uh, security of the schools uh, is a state issue, and and kind of nobody is against. Uh, if you if you ask you, hey, you want a penny extra on your tax, we'll put more reinforcement in the schools. Almost everybody is saying yes to that one. Absolutely. But, but so I think we as Americans, we have, you know, some feelings about where the money goes. Yes. If, it, if we don't know where it's going and, and we see all these stories about people taking flights at the taxpayer's expense and that kind of thing, I think that's the stuff that gets under our skin. Absolutely. We have a spinning problem up in uh, Washington. Yes. And that's the when, – when the recession was going on in my company, what we started doing was saying present a 10 percent budget reduction for your department. And what this allowed us to do was go, we didn't necessarily have to do it, but by, by seeing where, identifying where we could make cuts, we could say, look, this is, keeps coming up every, every time we meet. 
let's go ahead and see what happens when we cut this. Mm -hmm. Cuts are hard, but dieting is hard. And uh, you sometimes just have to do it. It's just uh, yeah. it's for the yeah. long-term health. So I, this is an interesting uh, thing about congressmen is that you represent, you're part of a body of representatives that represents the whole country as a whole. Yes. But you're also a representative of the district that you represent. Correct. Um, quite often, congressmen and women will... Um, do, do, do work, of course, in Congress for the whole country, but also do work for their specific district. Is there anything specific about this district you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I think um, one of the... It I'm very fortunate because a lot of things that I believe in not only help the district, but also help the whole country. Uh, but one of the big things that I hear in our district is uh, rural internet for, for uh, high speed internet for rural communities. Okay. okay. Because it develops, it helps develop the area. In fact, I think it was, uh, I'm going to, sorry if uh, mayor, if it was the mayor of Hawthorne that told me this, or I don't know who, who, who which mayor told me, I'm trying to meet with everybody. Uh, they were talking about a, a community, a business that came into the community and would have hired about 40 employees at a very good job for the area. Mm-hmm. And the problem was they didn't have high-speed internet. And the co what the company oh, wanted to really? charge them uh -huh. would have not been profitable enough to, to do it. Because I think it was a, over $1,000 a month to put in the wire to maintain it. Okay. And they lost all those jobs. They lost all that opportunity wow, to grow. Wow, and wow. Growth for the sake of growth isn't, a, isn't a, a, just a good reason. It has to be a, a decision that the local community makes. But they wanted that. They wanted mm -hmm. that company to come there. would have helped out a lot of people. Uh, and you also have a lot, from an education standpoint, you have a lot of school districts now going to iPads and uh, other tablets and saying, hey, take, right. it, take it home and learn. Right. Well, if you don't have, if you can't stream a documentary at home that you're asked to watch because you don't have the, the resources to do that, you, you, you've you just saved money by using that digital media, but now you've lost the educational opportunity because they don't have, they can't use it at home. And, and I'm not trying to throw you a curve here. It's District 3. Three. So, how is the how is the internet in District Three in in all? Is it does it vary from oh, one town well, to the next? It's yeah. pretty bad, on it, honestly. Oh, really? I mean, I, I live on a main road, and we have one choice of high speed internet. Uh, my wife, uh, at one point in time, uh, worked for MGM Studios and was allowed to work remotely, but they needed a certain speed of internet to work. Oh, oh and, no! And so we only had one choice because that's what companies consider high speed and what the internet companies consider high speed is two different very things. And that's the problem. I and, see. Yeah. And that's been my issue with it. I, I never like government to get involved unless they have to. But when you only have one real option, there's no option. And early in the days of cable, I remember the government got involved with that as well, and just as they did with the phone company and everything else. Okay. Um, well, that, that's good stuff. Okay, now you, the second thing on the list is regulations. And again, if I could ask you to comment on regulations both for the district okay. as well as for the country. Well, we have a tremendous interstate system here in Florida. And I'm going to talk about something that I know in, in my industry. So what happens with regulations is uh, – they put. They, we need common sense regulations. That's that's the short end of it. Uh, you always need some regulations. It's it's just like uh, you need rules in football. You need rules to keep people safe, uh, but you also need common sense. And I'll, I'll give you a great example that affects uh, everybody driving down I-75. You'll often get on the road and you'll see a truck driver just trying to maintain that speed limit as as, as perfectly as possible. And that's because they've put an, a regulation on them that at, at X hour they have to stop. Now. They might be 20 minutes past that to get to the next rest area or the next area at gas station where they would be comfortable stopping, but that's a huge fine and because of the way that regulations work. There needs to be common sense. There needs to be ability for them to go. I didn't know that. Yep. Wow. So it's uh, – uh, and there's other things like that. I mean, we've had projects where uh, there was a city, I won't say who, because the, the contract fell apart, where they wanted to restore, because uh, I work in rail, they wanted to restore some of their railroad. I mean, it, rail's expensive to repair, but it would have been an historic rail piece of rail to restore, and it would have been a, a 30000 for us to do it right. Now, when you throw in all the new regulations, uh, that would have been back in the day, uh, 20 years ago. But with all the new regulations, now it's a $100,000 job. But it's exact same thing. We would have built it exactly the same, but regulations that are unneeded just keep jacking up the price. And that's, a, that's an issue. And that's why President Trump has made a good good progress on repealing a lot of unneeded regulations. Well, and and that was one of the things I remember he said early on, and I can't remember if it was after he was elected or before, but he was taught, and this is a guy who's been in real estate, mm -hmm. and that was one of the things he said, it takes two years to get all the, all oh, the, yeah. all the uh, permits. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you could build a building in less than time and it takes to put the permits yep. together. Absolutely. Oh, and I mean, I, I personally, I, I was building a, a, a garage myself, and, it, and the permit process took forever to do it. Uh, and 
and it was ridiculous. It's a garage. I work in construction. My dad's a general contractor. Um, he was, you know, on his free time helping out. We would have done it right, but mm-hmm, we had to go. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to go through all the steps, and there is a reason for it, but there has to be common sense, where, and the process has to be sped up. I mean, we have, we have projects get delayed uh, years, and we know it's going to get approved. That's the, that's the issue. If it's going to happen anyways, let's find a way to speed it up. Now, if, if there's a real reason to stop it, then that's one thing. But if everybody knows, right, and usually right, they right, do. Right. Yeah, uh, I just want to comment real quickly. One of the things you said about regulations was we need common sense. That's what I took away from the last interview is that, you know what? I don't know enough about everything you're going to have to face if you're elected. But I know that I want somebody in there who has a sense for what is common sense. And that way you can take that truck driver regulation and say, you know what, that is just dumb to be finding a person trying to earn a living for his family just because he's trying to get to someplace he feels safer with his truck. That, that is, I love that one. Okay, uh, great uh, example, by the way. Uh, it's another strong characteristic, by the way, of somebody running for office, I think, is when you have some great examples. <laughs> well, we try. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I say you, you try. And sometimes, and you know, like, uh, sometimes you, like, I, I, it, it, they could be a 30-minute window. I don't know what the, the actual specific is. But I do know it's an issue because I've got truck drivers working for me that have expressed that that's. And that's what it comes down to when you're running is listen to the people, find out what's that's it. affecting yeah. them, yeah. And, and make sensible uh, changes. All right. Now, infrastructure is on your list as a, a very strong one for you. Um, so, again, I'm going to ask you to talk locally as well as uh, nationally on infrastructure and, and define what you mean by infrastructure. Well, infrastructure is, I mean, it's your rail, it's your ports, it's, uh, it's your roads, uh, roads being one of the bigger ones, uh, and it's the drainage. I think that's something that gets left alone uh, behind a lot, especially here in Florida. Drainage affects the degradation of rail systems, roads, all of your infrastructure, and it's something that we've really let slide uh, over a long time. And infrastructure projects take a while. But the thing about infrastructure projects is, one, it's something that the federal government absolutely should be involved in. It's, it's, uh, I mean, there's a case constitutionally uh, with maintaining mail roads that you could say that 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 it's it's actually high up there with one of their responsibilities and it, and it's something that regardless of party line everybody wants good road system now locally there's a lot of unused rail in the area and i'll give you a great example from the clay county area uh because i know it's slightly better from the rail system side is uh, there's a lot between clay county and putnam county there's all this unused rail mm-hmm. well they just put a beltway in through clay county uh it's being completed oh i think i drove past that yeah, yeah so yeah. uh it's not completely completed but it, right. it's making the progress i drove past both ends of it i think yep and yeah. Now, with that, there's a tremendous opportunity with a lot of, like, unused uh, pine lands and things that are, that are just, you know, they're just unused tracts of land that are zoned commercial to put in something like a new trucking facility, but they need the rail system, too. Now, if the federal government can get involved and, and help that along, move it along, build the roads needed to connect the truck, uh, trucking, truck stops to, to the, the beltway, mm-hmm. then... You have better paying jobs coming to the area. You, you have a tremendous ability to develop. Now, again, it comes down to what the local community wants. Some communities don't want to develop like that, and that's fine. I, I just want the resources available from the federal government if the community wants it. Um, we talked before we went on the air, and if you don't want to go to, in the direction of the uh, the conversation regarding the Suncoast Parkway slash Coastal Connector, mm-hmm. uh, it's a Marion County, Citrus County thing right now, and it's, apparently it's they've said, well, never mind, we're not going to do it, but indefinitely, uh, postponed indefinitely, the word postponed, I think, is what they're worried about. Postponed sounds like it might come back. Right. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on that one? Um you know, like I said, I, I work in, in construction, and I know how, how, for us, it's great because we're building stuff and, and we're providing jobs, and usually these jobs are long-term paying jobs. I know that uh, we do have a interstate system that is crowded. We're very crowded, And yeah. anytime you can get some of that congestion off, um, and again, like in Clay County, the Beltway was going to happen anyways. Uh, a lot of people opposed it at first, and then now that it's there, a lot of people are going, wow, this is nice to be able to get downtown pretty quickly and, and cut out that part of the drive. Uh, but I will preface that it has to be a local decision. It needs to be uh, – uh, now, not always. Sometimes there, there's – the federal government does have to say, look, we, we have – a clogged artery here, and uh, we, we've got to solve it somehow. But any time that it can be a local decision, it should be. So is that stretch of road they're talking about something that the federal government would have a role in, or is it strictly a state? I think that, that one would be a state, okay, um, okay. because it, 
the, this the way the interstate system works. It, but now, if this, what you can do is is grant the, a block grant the money down to, uh, I mean, provide the money to help with that project, and some uh, if if it gets greenlit again or uh, unpostponed. <laughs> Jasmine, last time you were here, I don't know if I did this, but I've been doing this with other candidates, and I'd like to do it with you or do it with you again. I can't remember if we did it the first time, and that's where I just stop talking and let you just have a campaign moment here, and and then if you don't mind. At the end, I'll do my little silly left field questions. Oh, sure. Did absolutely. I do that with you last No, we didn't get time for the left field. Oh, my gosh. Field, so. Okay. Well, left field questions are just silly, stupid stuff. Oh, that's you great. You can cut it out of the whole thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, so, okay, I'll, I'll just be quiet and let you talk. Well, I, I would just remind all the voters, uh, you get the government you vote for. If you're not happy, if you want to try something different, uh, I am I'm a Republican, a, a good Republican. There's no doubt about that. I'm not happy with the way Congress has been going. I'm not happy with the way that they've been voting. Uh and I believe that, that I want to get in there and, and do some good work for the people of Florida 3. I would encourage you to go to judsonsap.com. Little things like putting up a yard sign make a difference. And especially here in Marion and Alacho, which is at the far side of the district for me, uh, we don't have quite the ground game that we do around other areas. And we'd love to increase it. And I still come down here a lot and listen and go to events. So I'm learning the community. Uh, but you can help out. So go to judsonsap.com. And uh, check check out everything about me, and hopefully you'll like what you what you hear about. And if you like the interview, you can share the uh, interview as well. We'll put this on Facebook and as well as oh, uh, YouTube and. And, oh, and real quick, and, and let me tell you, any candidate, you should contact them. This is, it was my first interview that I've ever done uh, was with y'all, mm-hmm. and uh, it, was, it was great, and uh, just, just a, a very fair place to have an interview. And so I encourage you, if you're able to, you, you should check them well, out. I, pre- I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Ready for your left field sure. questions? All right. Um, apples or oranges? Ooh, oranges. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a tough choice, huh? It was. I like them both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gasoline or diesel? Well, diesel. I'm in construction. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of funny. Uh, Food truck or fancy restaurant? Food truck. Ah, me too. Yeah. Me too. So far, everybody has said food truck. Everybody I've asked that one to. All right. uh, Dog or cat? Dog. Dog. You got a dog? No, I got a Mastiff, yes. Big, big big dog. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thank you for coming in here and doing this. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to get to see you. And when you get elected, you're going to invite us up to to your office, right? I will invite you to my office, and then I'll find somebody with a better office that you can get a better view of. (laughs) Are are there some offices in Congress with no windows? I don't know that, but I do do know for a fact, because I know several congressmen, that there's definitely better offices than than you'll get as a freshman. So that's okay. Well, good luck. And uh, my condolences, you, you mentioned off the air that you're, your mom had pe- recently passed away. So yes, she passed away in April, and it was a it was a tough time for the campaign. Uh, but I took the time off to be with family and and, and versus that because that's if you don't care about family, you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing this job. That might be the most important thing you just said on this interview. I I, I know that our listeners will appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Judson. Good thank to, you for good having to see me. you again. Thank you, Brandon. Good good to see you again. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. This is the source W O C A Ocala. There are only a few things in life that you can be certain will always be around: death, taxes, the pursuit of happiness. 